everyone, it's Lisa from My Dreaming Soap. Welcome to my channel and thanks for dropping by. Now, I bet you weren't expecting a picture of a cat soap because that's not what we're doing today. The reason I've got this picture on the screen is because this is the assessment that I'm using for today's soap. So sometimes you will in this video see me doing weird things to get the colours I want. That's because I have to use exactly the same colours that I have in this cat soap to make my moonlight soap that we're making. And also for this landscape soap, I'm going to keep two very basic tools. So no scrapers, no extruders. So this is the design I'm looking to make and I'm going to start off by doing the moon embed first. Now a moon embed isn't new. I'm sure you've seen lots of people, including me, do them in the past. But what I want for my moon embed is I want to make it look like it's setting below the mountains. So I've got part of it showing, part of it hidden. And also I want to have a tree line in the moon itself. So it looks like the moon is behind a line of trees. I want my mountains and tree line to be as dark as possible. I don't have a black in my assessment, so I'm going to combine two dark colours that I have got, blueberry from You Make It Up and antique silver from Mike and Mama, and hopefully I can get those as close to black as possible. If you're not stuck with the restrictions I am, then of course just use black activated charcoal or something. I'm just after a single colour at the moment, so I've put those micas into my oil and then added the lye solution and I'm going to bring everything up to a trace. When I've got a very small quantity of batter like this, I'll use my Greek frappe mixer for blending it because you just can't get a big stick blender in there. So those work really well if you're dealing with small amounts of batter. I actually want this bit of soap to be really thick, so I'm just going to leave it alone and let it thicken up to piping consistency before we go any further. Okay, so we're all set up nice and thick with our batter. Now I know I said I wasn't using any special tools. I am just quickly using a piping bag. If you don't have a piping bag, you don't need one. You could literally just put the soap that we're gonna do on with, you know, a spatula or something, or even just cut the corner out of a small plastic bag and use that. Now to make my moon look like it's behind a mountain, I've made a little bit of silicone to go inside my plastic tube that I use to make my moon. All I did was blocked off one end of the tube with some tape, poured in some silicone, blocked off the other end, laid it down and then let that set. Now if you just wanted to have a moon behind a mountain, you wouldn't need to do that. You could literally just make a normal moon embed and then just slice a bit of it off the bottom. But if you remember from my design, I wanted my moon to look like it was behind a mountain and a row of trees as well. So I'm just going to pipe some rows of trees on the flat part of the silicone and that will be the bit that will stick up into the moon. I've just used a simple little round piping tip and as I said you could just do this with the corner cut off of a bag or something. And once I've piped a couple of rows so my trees are tall enough I'll then just go over with them and just sort of rough them up a little bit and make them a little bit more tree shaped. And once that's done I'll then just let this set just for a little while, just to make sure it's not going to be disturbed by the rest of the batter that I pour in. And then onto my pipe, it's just a bit of plumbing pipe. I've got a cap that fits nicely on the end of mine. And I want to make sure that this silicone isn't going to get stuck in the mould because silicone inside a plastic mould can actually be quite grippy. So I've just taken a little bit of oil and I'm just going to rub that very lightly over the bit of the silicone that's going to touch that plastic pipe. And 
once that's done I can slip that into that tube it will fit nicely because that's the tube that I actually made the silicone piece in Let's move on now and make the moon itself. So I've got the colours that I need for this. So I'm using some titanium dioxide and some more of that antique silver. I am fragrancing my embed and I'm using A Love Story by Sentimental. Now I have said this in the past, this is not a love spell, loving spell type dupe, it is a different fragrance and it is a really gorgeous fragrance, um, as I said, from Sentimental in the UK. So I'll just bring my batter to a light trace. And then I want to split this batter off because I'm going to do an in the pot swirl so I can get some nice swirly bits going through my moon. So I'll divide my batter out. I want most of it to be the white and then just a small amount for the dark grey. I'm going to deliberately keep my trace nice and light because I want the swirl to be really wispy through the moon. And then just divide out my weighed up fragrance oil. Just like a normal in the pot swirl, I'm going to tip some of the grey batter into the white, lifting and lowering the pot so that it goes all the way through the batter. I am going to reserve just a little bit because it is quite likely that it may be a little whiter towards the end of the pour. So I'm just going to make sure I've got some grey left for the end. Now you can see this is really still quite fluid, this batter, and that's what I want to create those wispy swirls. So I'm just carefully lifting up my pipe and holding that silicone so it doesn't flop forward and then pouring down the side of the pipe away from those trees because I don't want to damage them. I'll just pour that in and fill up that pipe and then that can set up overnight. So on to the main part of the soap. So here's my little tray of goodies. The same fragrance oil, a love story from Sentimental. And then some purple passion from You Make It Up. And as we've already seen, some antique silver from Micah Mama. And once again, that blueberry from You Make It Up. And finally, some titanium dioxide. And for all of these, I've already dispersed them in some oils taken from my batch. So first of all, I'm going to mix up just a small amount of batter because I want to do the shoreline at the front of my soap. I'm going to be doing mine in grey, which is not really my first choice, but it's one of the colours that I've got to use. I don't want it to go all the way across the bottom of my mould, so I'm just going to prop the mould up on one side and pour to one edge of my mould. And then I'll let that set up a bit and then I'll just shape it with a spatula into the shape that I want.
So next I'm going to pour everything that's below the mountain range in the background. So I want the foamy bit where the waves are breaking on the shoreline. I want the sea itself, I'm going to do that in a couple of different colours. And I also want to have the white flecks in the sea, which is the reflection from the moon. You may have spotted there that I emptied my lye jug into my oils and then I've poured some oil back into that lye jug. I do tend to do that if I'm going to reuse that lye jug for one of my colours. I like to make sure there's no sort of little pool of lye still sitting at the bottom that's not been mixed in because that could make that portion lye heavy. So that's just a way of just making sure I've got all of that lye thoroughly mixed. I want this batter to stay nice and fluid so I am going to blend it slightly with my stick blender and split my colours out. I'm going to jump ahead to my mixed up colours because I'm sure you've seen enough mixing of colours. So here are my mixed up soap colours. I've got a pure dark blue and then also a lighter blue so that's just the dark blueberry colour with some TD added. And then I've also got just some white in a little squeeze bottle. I'll just portion out the fragrant soil and give that a nice mix in and then we're ready to go. So I'm just going to pour in a bit of the dark blue on the other side of the mould where there's none of that grey shoreline. Just spread it around a bit. And then start bringing in some of the white with the squeeze bottle. The reason I want the squeeze bottle is because I don't want a big solid layer of the white. I want it to be sort of like that frothy, foamy bit of the wave that you get. And then I'll bring in a bit of the other two blues into that foamy area and then just gently give them a little bit of a mix up so that we've got that sort of nice foamy top to the breaking waves. And then I'm just carrying on working my way up the mould, alternating the two blue colours. And then for the area that's going to be below where the moon embed is, I'm going to bring in some little flashes of white to be the reflection from the moon.
I do want to make sure that I end on a white layer right at the top because I'd like to again have another sort of like foamy wave bit that it looks like is hitting the shoreline at the base of the mountain towards the back of the soap. Next I've made sure that I've let that sea area set up really quite nicely. I haven't bothered making sure that it's really flat because I actually would like a slightly wobbly layer at the bottom of my mountain. Now I've made up my colour for the mountain in the same way as I made up that colour. Remember that I did the piping on the little piece of silicone so that it all blends nicely together. And now I'm just going to tilt my mould again and pour that soap batter in so that I can have it sloping more towards one side of the soap. I then just mucked around a little bit to get it reasonably flat. Now the only reason I wanted it flat at this point is because I wanted to make sure I didn't get any air gaps under my moon embed. So just popping that moon embed in and then just roughing up the mountains either side of it to try and create another sort of tree line effect. And then on to my night sky. Now this dark colour is a combination of that blueberry and also the purple together because I've got to get that purple into my soap somewhere. And it actually did give a really nice colour and I was very pleased with it. I've got some white separately there because I want to do an ombre effect. I want the sky to be lighter and brighter around the bottom where the moon is and then getting darker towards the top. I've also put a little bit in a squeeze bottle again so that I can put some stars into the sky. And I have actually given the soap in the squeeze bottle a little bit of an extra blend because I want that to be slightly thicker. It will still squeeze out okay but I do want the little bits of white that I'm using for the stars to hold a little bit of shape. So starting with a very pale colour first, I don't want pure white because then that may just distort the shape of the moon because the moon's got white in it. So I am going to add some of that bluey purple colour in first. And then just carry on with my ombre and my stars every now and again until I get to the top of my soap.
So as normal, I covered the soap and z-popped it overnight. So into the oven at 170 degrees F, 70 degrees C. Turn the oven off as the soap goes in and then just leave it there till the next day. So let's have a look at the cut and see what we've got on the inside. And then here are some final pictures of the soap. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you like the soap. If you have, it would be great if you gave me a thumbs up because that really does help my channel. If you'd like to see what I'm doing in the future, why not subscribe to my channel? If you've got any questions or comments, then leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching everyone. Happy soaping!